All right, hey, this is uh, Brian with HVAC School, and I want to just give a quick demonstration on how to tell what type of refrigerant you have in your system with reasonable accuracy. I mean, you're not going to be perfect without a refrigerant analyzer, but those are expensive. It's not something that most techs have. And after you've done a recovery into your tank, before you take that tank and, say, put it into the larger tank at the shop and potentially contaminate that whole tank, I've got a recovery tank full of about eight pounds of refrigerant here and I'm going to go ahead and connect to it and I'm just going to use the suction side hose here. I'm going to connect to vapor and I am going to purge the line as I open it. So, oh, I got some other lines here that are open. Make sure to leave all the, make sure everything's shut first. Then we're going to purge. I'm going to purge the line a little bit, just make sure we get all the air out of it. All right. So now, I, have it, I currently have it set to R22, as you can, well, let me show you here. So it's currently set up to R22. And if you look here, you can see that we're running 226 PSI and 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is our saturation. Now, if I, I've got my Testo um, 905, this is the Testo 557s, and I've got my Testo 905 here that's synced up with the, with the app, and you can see here that we're at 72.2, 72.1 degrees Fahrenheit, which has been sitting here and acclimating with this tank. So this tank is actually right about 72 degrees, which means that my saturation temperature, if this was R22, should read 72 degrees Fahrenheit and we're not reading that. So we don't have R22 in this tank. Now the question is, what do we have in this tank? With a typical gauge, you could look at the scale, but here what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scroll through refrigerants until we find the refrigerant that I think it might be, or in fact, sincerely hope that it is, being that that's what we just recovered. And now we're gonna set it to 410A, and you can see that our PSIG is 77.8 which means that we're very, very close. So we're 70, at this point we're 72.4 in my thermometer and 77.8. We can be reasonably certain that this is mostly R410A in this tank. Now, there could be a little bit of nitrogen in it, something else affecting it um, that's causing the, different, the difference in saturation, um, but we're pretty certain that's what it is. Now, if I would say, if say if this was reading, oh, I don't know, you know, 40 or 50 or 100 like it was, then we would be pretty certain that that's not what we have in the tank. There's a, there's a little bit of to tolerance there. Um, with, with what we're reading here, I would feel safe going ahead and putting this into the tank at the shop and, and maintaining, you know, 95% purity rates um, for recovery. If same thing would be true, if I assumed that it was R22, then I would go to the R22 scale on the refrigerant like I was initially and compare the saturation to the actual ambient temperature. The one thing you have to be careful with here is I've seen guys try to do this on systems. It works well on a tank, but it doesn't work great on a system. Um, in a system, you have multiple components that are in different air streams, and so you you're not going to have the consistency of temperature that's going to give you that consistent saturation. And so you can't do it in that case. But when you have a tank where all of the refrigerant is in one location, you can know the temperature of the tank, um, you're, you're going to be pretty safe doing it this way.